So guys, Fallout 4 is real. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm so hyped. Yeah, Who I saw that one coming? Yeah, I, uh, some of you were talking about, like, on, the, on our actual last episode that we recorded, Roberto and uh, and Louis were, like, so hyped for Fallout 4 to be announced. And it's funny, because, like, I woke up one of those days in the morning, uh, in, uh, the day that it was announced, and I just got on Twitter the first thing I did. And I, I had never seen this happen before, but literally, like, everyone I could see in my Twitter timeline was tweeting about fucking Fallout 4. Like, everybody said, was... like, it's a bad thing. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not, like, a bad thing. Yeah, I was just like, holy shit, like, this shit is big. And the reason why I was, like, so kind of surprised is because, shame on me, I haven't played the Fallout games. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. They're, they're, it, it's only been in, like, recent years they've actually become that well-known, I guess, because right. they've, uh, I don't know, the, uh, they, they've definitely always been outshined by Elder Scrolls. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, I actually have Fallout 3. And that's actually kind of a funny story because I have two copies of Fallout 3 because I already owned it and then I got it as a gift. And then I just kept like both copies. Uh, so I have are they two still copies. In the, are they still in the shrink wrap? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> like the, the, one, the funny thing is I had one new that I opened and I think we tried it for like 20 minutes and we're like, okay, that's kind of cool, but we'll do it. Like we'll see it more later. And it just never happened to get back into it. So. And it's not like I didn't like the game or anything. I just, like, I guess I didn't get far enough to the point where it gets, like, really cool. And in the beginning, I was like, ah, this is kind of boring. I'm just, like, a kid in a spaceship or whatever. Um, and then I kind of, like, stopped playing. Um, yeah, as soon as you actually get outside and leave the vault, it drastically changes. And it's it's pretty awesome after that. You can go do whatever yeah, no, the hell you want. I'm thinking about getting back to it just to kind of, like, see how it is and, and get hyped for follow for again. Because it seems like... That's going to be the game, right? Like, everybody seems to be super excited about it right now. Anyway, guys, uh, if you just stumbled across this podcast in the winter webs, I am sorry for you, but this is Real Game Talk, the podcast where your host, Daniel Lima, who also happens to be myself, receives different guests every week to discuss carefully chosen, uh, sometimes kind of dumb topics about video games in the video game industry. It's common for the conversation to go into all sorts of different places as well, and feel free to send your comments below if you want to be part of it. Also, you can find our podcast on Twitter at RGT Podcast if you want to send us uh, ideas for the podcast topics. But today, guys, we're all super excited about E3 because E3 is going to happen in a little more than a, a week from now. Actually, exactly a week from now, it will be starting with uh, the Nintendo World Championship, then the Bethesda Conference, Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, Sony. All of them are going to have their own press conference. Square Enix is also having a press conference this year. PC Gamer is going to have a conference with a lot of like PC game announcements. And we're going to have the Nintendo Digital event for the third consecutive year. They're going to be doing like their own thing rather than doing a, a full press conference. So with me today, uh, we have Roberto Rubiano. What's up, Roberto? Hello. Hey, Dan. At, at this point, you might as well be considered a co-host for this thing. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you'll be here all the time. Uh, also, returning guest, Aaron Klecker. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, CJ, uh, Charles CJ Mead, who is the host of the Pseudo Random Show, one show that we all do together, except for Lewis. What's going on, CJ? Uh, I'm much just pretty excited about the Bethesda stuff, really. Yep. Uh, I guess we all are. I'm not that much, but well, everyone else. <laughs> and also the host of the show called Museum of Mincheka, which I listen to every once in a while, Lewis Mincheka. Hey, what's up? Doing pretty good, Lewis. This is, I'm, right. I'm very hyped for this conversation. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to be fun. So we're going to do a very special, different kind of episode today where rather than having like our, our usual like topic-based stuff, we're going to have one big topic that hopefully is going to fill up this whole thing, which is E3 predictions. Uh, each one of us is going to have a maximum of five, maybe a little less, uh, predictions for what is going to happen at E3. Now, those can be uh somewhat realistic or they can be totally crazy like oh they're gonna announce all that shit or whatever all that happens is that you talk about like the things that you expect to see or that you want to see both are fine also we're gonna try to avoid like things that are too vague or too obvious um but like oh nintendo is gonna show gameplay for star fox i think that's kind of like too i think that's a given <laughs> at this point oh but... that that kind of kills a couple of mine oh okay so i guess that... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess i guess that's fine uh but we'll, and then we'll discuss each other's predictions, all right? So I guess we can do kind of a, a round thing where we're going to do each person does one and then each person does the second one and, and so forth. Since I'm the host, I'm going to not start, but I'm going to choose somebody to start. <laughs> Since uh, you're the one that's for the first time here, CJ, why don't you go ahead and tell us your first prediction? Um, 
I mean, this one's kind of like the the big one for me, the main one that I have that kind of encompasses a lot of the other predictions I have, I guess. But um, my my overall thing is I think Bethesda is essentially gonna like in quotes win E3 because okay. um, the reason I think this is because uh, even a couple weeks before E3 even started, they already announced that Fallout 4 is gonna be coming out and that they're gonna be doing a lot of stuff with that. But if that right. is what they already announced before E3 even started, what are they waiting to announce then? Because usually the press conference is when they have a lot of big stuff come out. So I That's think we're going to see... I was say my follow up to that would be I think they just kind of uh, prematurely blew their load. I think that's their biggest that's their biggest ace up their sleeve. I don't what else would they be able to announce that just tops that? I mean all the hype that you get behind, you know, Fallout. What what comes next? Well, I, showing I could, Fallout a lot more is one of the things talking about like what they're gonna do with it. Um, maybe like new modes or new things that they're gonna do with it. And also, I think some people have been predicting. Is it um Dishonored? That's also from yeah bethesda yeah so i think some people are predicting that there could be something else in that franchise possibly yeah what i was gonna say is i was thinking they're gonna do potentially because they, they also have doom they're gonna be showing off as well oh yeah that's but right. but i think they're also gonna be doing or unveiling like potentially dishonored 2 and elder scrolls 6 like i think right. both of those could potentially be in this because this is the first time they've ever had a press conference and if they're already showing they already announced one of their biggest ips they could potentially announce like those other two things there along with showing doom stuff and they will just like essentially take over E3 at that point because those are all games that people have been clamoring for for years pretty much. I feel right. like Elder Scrolls 6 is too soon, but that's just me. Um I feel like they focused a lot of their efforts on Fallout 4 and I don't I mean unless they unless Bethesda has grown a lot bigger in the past like 5 years Usually they focus on one, either Elder Scrolls or Fallout, and then they spit that game out. But I think there will be more titles being shown. I don't think Elder Scrolls is going to be it, but I definitely think that they will have something else as well. And granted, as you said, you brought up something that I wasn't even thinking about. Doom 4 is the thing, uh, and that's now just being called Doom. And that game has been in development in, like, forever. And it's been, like, I think it's been, like, restarted a couple times. Or, like, one time it, they, they did, like, a full restart, or, like, laid off half the company or whatever. Bethesda picked it up. Um, or actually, I don't remember if that one was being published by Bethesda from the beginning. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, there's definitely a lot to expect from the Bethesda conference. Um, do you have something to add to all that, Roberto? I would say that 6 is very much a possibility, Elder Scrolls. Because they do have the team over at Obsidian as well. It's not just Bethesda. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. So that was that was that was a great start. I think. Um. Next, let's go with let's do Roberto. All let's right. So my first prediction is going to be Paper Mario for the Wii U. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. Well, because seeing as what a disaster Sticker Star was for the 3DS, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to bring try to do another one again. And was go it really back. that bad? It was pretty bad. It's like they made it an RPG, but they took out everything that makes it an RPG. Okay. So I figured maybe they'll they'll try to throw Rosalina in there, like they. Oh uh, yeah, there's the, like everything else. <laughs> yeah. Rosalina OP character. Yeah, they're so. putting Rosalina in everything now. Rosalina announced for the new Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm, but, but Roberto, I will say I actually do have Sticker Star for the 3DS, and I don't think it's not quite the disaster you're making it out to be. It has some pretty good uh, um, platforming elements and cool, like little writing and and like cool little cutscenes and stuff like that. I'd say it was okay. Shots sure. fired. Why do you sure. think that? <laughs> I mean, it's still Paper Mario, but it kind of lacks a lot of what the gameplay elements are. Like, there's no leveling up. There's no. There's no badges. There's if you run out of stickers, you pretty much you, you lose because you can't do anything else. You don't have any basic attacks. Hmm, I see. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never played that. But anyway, so what about you doing now, Louis? Okay, what's up? Like my uh, my prediction? My first Yeah, one? your first prediction. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's let's take a look at my list here. All right. You know what? I'm going to start off with my, my most off-the-wall, like, unrealistic one. And this is the All one right. that's that's been done so many times. But my first prediction is that Sony re-reveals The Last Guardian and gives a release window in 2016. <laughs> there you go. Uh, 2016. Everyone's wanted that for so long. It's It would be awesome if they did it, but... Yeah. At least you're giving it some time. <laughs> and that's... Oh, no, because like, there was like a, a statement released earlier this year where they were saying that now that they're still working on it, that it was officially confirmed that it hasn't been canceled. And so my guess is 
that because they're probably moving on to PS4, that they're going to just completely start over and just build it from the ground up. And they scrapped everything and they're just keeping some elements. And when I say re-reveal, right. I mean, I'm talking about like, it's going to be a completely different game than what we saw that first time it was revealed. So that's right. what I'm thinking. Do you actually know the year it was initially revealed? Uh, I think it was, what, 2007? I want to say. Yeah, was... so- something like that. It was something a long time ago. Something like that. It was a uh, long time ago. 2000, yeah. 2009. It's been in development since 2007. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, honestly, Wait, when I started... It... Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, wasn't that originally supposed to be for, like, the PS2, then they had to, like, change it to PS3, or was it for PS3 originally? It was for PS3 originally, because that was supposed to be Team Ico's uh, first next-gen game, because okay. they did Shadow of the Colossus and Ico. Okay. Yeah. So that was when the PS3 was next gen, <laughs> just so you know yeah. how old it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of people are excited for that and kind of like, I, like I, I think for the past like seven years or so, like since it was first announced, people are like predicting that it will come back, it will come back, it will come back. It hasn't yet, but we'll see. So why, what are you going to think if they don't do it? Like if they don't bring we'll it back see. this time, is, is, is it dead? Or is it just going to, you're going to predict again next year? <laughs> well, first, that's going to crush my heart. That's first, that's the first thing. And secondly, <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I think that there, this is the best time. I mean, I think with all the little, the little evidence and little breadcrumbs that's been fed to us since last year, this is, this would be the year to reveal it. And if not, then there, it's probably going to get canceled. It's probably going to get an official cancel if it doesn't okay. get revealed. All right. I can see that. Also, it would be good because the PlayStation 4 doesn't have that many exclusives so far. So it would be kind of like a big hit if it was like a really solid game and it was coming out kind of soon. But that was great. So, Clacker, what's your first prediction? So I have several ones that could be my first prediction, but I'm going to go with the one that's probably never going to happen, but I want to happen a lot. Go ahead. So I... Microsoft always announces a Call of Duty every single E3 ever, and just that is a constant thing they always do. For once, for once in their lifetime, I would like them to announce an IP that is completely different, that is not Halo or Call of Duty. If this this happens, that'd be fantastic, but usually it doesn't. Just to remind you, though, like Call of Duty usually opens the Microsoft conference, That's but true. it's 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 a multi platform game, anything. But I, I get what you're you're trying to say. Where like they're always uh, opening and giving like making a big deal out of Call of Duty and everything. And you just want them to show like something new and unique and exclusive. Yes, that is exactly what I want. I doubt Microsoft will do it, but I would like to see Microsoft kind of expand their horizons instead of just staying with Call of Duty and Halo. Because probably what's going to happen is they'll reveal Halo 6 gameplay. They'll reveal, like, the new Call of Duty wow. game. Halo 5. Halo 5. Halo 5, <laughs> Halo 5. Halo 5 bro. My yep. bad. That's fine. My bad. <laughs> I forgot. I, I considered you're the going, Master you're jumping, Chief. Yeah. You're jumping the I ship cons- there. Considered the Master Chief collection one of the games, but anyways. Okay. So, so let me ask you this about your your IP that you're talking about. So I'm I'm guessing that you specifically want Microsoft to unveil an IP that's not a first person shooter, right? That would be interesting. I wouldn't mind if they announced one, but it has to be different than a multiplayer first person shooter. It could be an RPG first person shooter. That could still be very different and I would enjoy it. But I don't want them to fall into what they've always done, which is multiplayer first-person shooters. Yeah, they've been doing it forever, and you can say they're good at it, but I want them to try and expand their horizons and not just stay with one thing for the rest of the entire, like, Microsoft's era. Okay, that works. We can also remind that, like, Microsoft currently owns Rare. And Rare has done like a lot of Nintendo six, like half of the Nintendo sixty four library, pretty much. Uh, so true. maybe they could get them to do something. They're, they've been kind of quiet, quiet for a while. That's true. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead now and say my first prediction, which is I, I feel like all of you have given optimistic ones right now. I'm gonna start with like a very pessimistic one, um, <laughs> somewhat. Okay. So my prediction is this: Sony will have a long conference with lots of different people coming to the stage to talk about games, like they always do. However, this time. Even though they're going to be like 10 different people presenting the, the thing, not a single one of them will even mention the word Vita. And by that, I'm, I mean my prediction is the Vita is dead. Like, I don't think they're going to announce anything for the Vita, any Vita game, or even mention it. Because I feel like in the past years, we've kind of seen a, like a decay since the Vita release of like how much they mention it and how much they, they give room for it at E3. And I think this might be the sad year where there's nothing in there did you hear the recent news dan no yeah, one I of the top it. zony executives called vita a legacy console yeah oh shit. it is dead 
it is dead. Okay. So yeah, so that ends up, ended up being somewhat of a safe prediction then, I guess. Yeah. They may still, like, <laughs> the thing is, they may still do, like, the demo reel thing where they just show, like, those are all the games, and then, like, they show, like, really quick, like, a bunch of, like, little glimpses of, of different, like, indie games and that kind of stuff. Like, two seconds per know. game. Like, yeah. yeah. But I don't know, I just have a feeling that it's gone. Like, that they're not gonna, like, they're, they're gonna pretend that it doesn't exist. Because that's kind of what I felt, like, from last, like, Sony's last E3. They mention it, but they only mention it as the like the PS4 integration thing. They're like, oh, it's because you can use it to remote play with the PS4 and everything. Because they were pushing the PS4 really hard, and they were pushing remote play a little bit still. But I feel like they even gave up on that at this point, because like nobody really gave a shit. Like, and it's not that it doesn't work or whatever, but it, like I just feel like most people don't don't care enough. So that's my prediction that like the vid is going to be dead, and there's going to be nothing uh, really announced for it. Well, I so bet they're gonna. I bet they're gonna do that thing that they do, where it's gonna be on the show floor and stuff like that. And I think every Vita game that's gonna be there, it's gonna be multi-plat. They're generally speaking, they're they have PC games on there and other. Just no, I agree with yeah. that. Like, I bet there will be some things on the show floor. My prediction is just that they're not gonna mention it in the conference. So okay. if they don't mention it in the conference at all, I I gain a point. If if they do, then I then my thing failed. Besides uh, wait, the so, sizzle, so besides the sizzle reel, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I, I I believe there won't even be a season reveal. I'm oh, predicting damn. there won't even <laughs> like, be a season. Go okay. ahead, uh, CJ. So you're you're saying we're competing for points for this now? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. I wasn't expecting that. I would have prepared much more if we I knew they were doing this. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't plan that well, but uh, I guess one of the ideas could be we I'll meet again after E3, and then we're like, so who got the most like right things? Oh, I could be yeah. completely safe and guess everything right, but that's oh yeah not yeah, fun. but <laughs> exactly that's not fun at all. Um, but all right, since I I just brought up this one, I guess I'm gonna try like I'm gonna do the second one, and then we're gonna go reverse till we end with CJ. All right. Um. Just because I want to mess up the order <laughs> and just make myself more confused. Okay, so my second prediction is for the Microsoft conference. I don't like how Clacker did it. Uh, I don't follow a lot of Microsoft. I don't own an Xbox One or anything. But I do know that they recently purchased Minecraft, right? And if they, they, they purchase it for like a big amount, and I think they're going to do something with it. It may be a little too soon, but my prediction is that Microsoft will unveil an exclusive title from the Minecraft franchise. That may like that that will be will be exclusive to Microsoft platforms, so like Windows, Xbox One, maybe Xbox 360, and that could be like a new game, like Minecraft 2 or something, or it could be some form of like DLC or special functionality. But like there will be something Minecraft that is going to be exclusive to Xbox in the in the Microsoft conference. Well, that's my my prediction for Microsoft. You guys play Minecraft? Yeah, nope. I can. I can see that. They've also said that they're going to try and convert Minecraft, which was originally a Java language, into a C++ language, which is cool, and which might help out modders do a lot more with the thing. But I'm interested hmm. to see what Microsoft will do with Minecraft, if they're going to lock it down so that modders can't like do whatever they want, or if they're actually going to keep it open and then continue to let everyone just kind of experiment with that thing right. it's it's an interesting prediction and it is probably they're going to mention something about it i can definitely see them mentioning something about it because it's it's such a huge thing and they they bought it like i want to say yeah. almost about a year ago now so they've had time to obviously develop something with it so it will be interesting to see what happens yeah, and maybe not necessarily it will come out like this year or like too soon, but I think they'll they'll be showing something because that's like a Minecraft is a big deal. Like my I, I I I always think of Minecraft as like one of the games that changed the last like that changed the gaming uh, industry in a way that uh, a lot of games didn't last generation because that was one of the first games where people started like streaming and putting on YouTube and like talking about it all the time, you know. And and today, like every game is like that, you know. Like today, every game is being let's played. But I remember like one of the first games that I saw where like people were so into it and like doing and watching let's plays all the time was Minecraft. Uh, and it got big to the point where like it kind of reached all kinds of audiences because a lot of kids play Minecraft. Like I have a ten year old cousin that plays Minecraft since it came out pretty much. So like since he was born, I don't know. Um, but then, like, there are also a lot of like older people like us who, or, like, even older than us that, that play Minecraft a lot. So I feel like Microsoft can should make a good use of that franchise now that they own it. 
Klecker, let's hear your second prediction. All right, so my second prediction is Nintendo earlier the, earlier on mentioned something about mobile mobile games and stuff like that. So my prediction is that Nintendo will expand upon this in E3, and either a new IP will be announced specifically for a mobile game, or they are going to port one of the existing games they have onto a mobile device. Um, I was thinking about which games would fit on a mobile device um, well. At this point, probably anything that runs on a 3DS, I think, I would, would run on a mobile. Probably, At least on the hardware side. Yeah, on the hardware side, yes. But control-wise is what I was more thinking of. Like, what would oh, yeah, be sure. a good controlling mechanism? I was, and I, I was thinking WarioWare. Oh, that'd be WarioWare would actually be a good one. If they announced WarioWare for a mobile game, that would actually work pretty well. I'd buy that. Um, so yeah, yeah, a lot of people would buy that. So and it's I'm I'm predicting they're going to do something with it because they announced it earlier, and I can see them going into that industry because the one competition that the 3DS has right now is mobile development. Like that's the only thing that can hold a candle to the 3DS when it comes to handheld devices. I so, think honestly, it, it crushes it pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. I was going to say, I honestly don't see Nintendo uh, talking or discussing their mobile plans during their Nintendo digital event because that, that that's their basically their E3 press conference and they need to like focus on their walled garden of Nintendo hardware. And so they should basically not waste any time on that and actually have like a separate Nintendo Direct later on in the year when they're ready to discuss those mobile games. Because I think right now they're probably still in the early development stages to be talking about that. Because I think they were talking about five games up to like uh, March of 2017. That's how much they're planning on doing uh, between now and 20 and early 2017. And they were saying right. that... Uh, that the reason why it's only five games is because they're planning on supporting those games post-launch to the point where it's going to have and consume all those resources. Interesting. They're doing a good job of, like, supporting games post-launch so far. Like, the, uh, Smash Bros. has gotten DLC, Mario Kart got DLC, uh, a bunch of, like, a, a couple of 3DS games got DLC as well. Like Splatoon Fire Emblem has stuff, been so. getting DLC constantly. Oh, yeah, that's right. Are you guys playing Splatoon, by the way? Yes. Yes. Yep, 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 I, yep, yep. Yeah, I have not picked it up. How is it? It's a it's awesome. Thing. <laughs> Steven says right. he likes it a lot. I haven't played it yet, though. It's, it, the mechanics are very solid, and they feel fantastic, and I have yet to find a bug in the game. Knock on wood, but it's pretty, it's very well done. They did a very fantastic job with it. I mean, it's a Nintendo game. It's unlikely that you'll find a bug in it. <laughs> yeah, yes, but... this is true. This is why I like Nintendo, but... It's still a very great game. Like, that announcement at the last E3 was a fantastic announcement, and pretty much I'd say, uh, nah, I'm stretching it. You're right. Anyways. The, the, the only kind of weird thing that, uh, that I saw about it it's, is that it seems like you cannot really choose the stages that you play on. You nope. cannot. Uh, yes. well, it's, it's the like same thing rim. with a lot of multiplayer games. Oh, really? Okay, I, I, yeah. I don't really play that many multiplayer games, just, like, the ones that I usually play, you can, like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, you creating a room and then choosing something and people joining you, you know? But I guess everything that's more, like, matchmaking-based, uh, then, I'm like, somebody would, like... Yeah, and I was also thinking like in Mario Kart where everybody votes for their 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 stage and they just does it like a roulette wheel. Like I was right. also thinking like that too. All right. Yeah, they they are going to expand upon the game. They've already said that. Um, because right now you can't create your own matchmaking room with your friends. You just kind of join whatever they're in, which works and it's fine. But it'd be nice if you could create your own group and then go against another group. Which you can't do yet, but Net I'm pretty sure Nintendo has said they are going to expand upon the game and implement that and continue to expand upon Splatoon, which is interesting because usually Nintendo isn't one to expand upon a game. Once it's released, it's done. But oh, they're doing it a lot now. Yeah, it's it's they're, they're, they're changing. They're changing, and I'm liking the way they're changing because the DLC they're releasing is it's great is good it's not like hey here's like costumes it's actual content it's like more levels it's more things you can have more things you can get the one thing right. they've messed up on is amiibos but that's another discussion okay um all right Next. so louis uh give us your second prediction okay here we go let's take a look at my list here all right so i'm going to you do prediction number two as let's stick with nintendo all right 
Nintendo will unveil their next DLC character for Smash Brothers, and they will not be their fan voted one. It will be a separate one, and it's going to have an early fall release window. Okay. Mm. You have any? Eight. No, I have no. I have not predicted who that who that next character is. But if I had to predict one, I would say it was going to be a legacy character like Roy or someone else who got left out the the chopping block. You know. Mm. I highly Ice doubt that climbers. they're going to get Snake. No. Oh, Ice Climbers. climbers. <laughs> okay, you know what? That's going to be... I'm changing, my, I'm changing my prediction. Nintendo will unveil Ice Climbers as a Wii U exclusive Smash Bros. DLC. There you go. That Bam. Would be, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Rosalina would finally have some competition. <laughs> Gotta okay. fucking hate playing against Roberto using Rosalina. It pisses me <laughs> off every time. I was going to say that the Ice Climbers, they said that the reason why Ice Climbers was even cut out in the first place was just to give parody to the 3DS version. Because they said that they couldn't get the Ice Climbers to run on the 3DS. I'll be very honest, like, I don't I don't really buy that that much. Like, because, I mean, we're out programmers, and I feel like for everything, there's a way. Like, sure. I don't know. Because, like, I, I, I know, like, there, there are two characters or whatever, but I, I still feel like they could have found a way to make it happen if they really wanted to, you know? So I feel like they might they might have not tried enough. There there is a way, but deadlines are a thing and there might oh, yeah, not have right. been a way like they thought of before the deadline. So now that they've been doing DLC, it's much more possible that Ice Climbers will get announced, which would be awesome. Sure. Yeah. That that's that's a good prediction. I would hope that they do a new character though. Like I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I think that's I, what I, the I, fan one is for. That's that's just me though. Okay. Yeah. I I feel like I would rather see like them bringing new guys in than just like re-releasing guys I've played before. But I'm pretty sure the fans of the Ice Climbers are gonna be like really excited about that. Uh, just like the fans of uh, other characters that have Mewtwo. been left out would be. Yeah. <laughs> like Mewtwo just came back. All right. So Roberto, what's our second one? Okay. So my second prediction. I think that Final, I think that Square Enix is gonna announce Final Fantasy 12 HD. Mm, okay. Seeing it's That's one of the, it's pretty much the last one that hasn't been remade because 13 is too new to be remade, honestly. But because we already know they got 15, they've got Kingdom Hearts 3. They'll probably show some stuff off for Final Fantasy 14. They might, they're probably gonna show Hitman and Laura Croft, so they might round it up with Final Fantasy 12 HD. Wait, have okay. they actually no, announced no. another Hitman already? I I think so. I think they. They might have teased something. Mm, I, I I don't know if it yet. Um. Yeah. But I I feel I feel like that makes sense. Yeah. They've been doing like a lot of HDs and releases and stuff. So why not, right? But yeah. what about Eleven? I, well, I don't know much about Final Fantasy. So Eleven's an MMO. So. Oh yeah, that's right. Eleven is the one that they they got remade into. No, 14, fourteen wasn't it? No, no, no. Fourteen came out. It was a disaster, and then they rebuilt it from the ground up, and they called it a Realm Reborn. Oh okay. And yeah. then Eleven, something else all along. Yeah, it was a it was an MMO they did before. Oh, okay. Right. That works. Lots of stuff for Square Enix, apparently. CJ, hmm. you've been like, it's been a while since I caught up with you, but uh, now you're going to be able to do like true predictions. So your second and third one. Oh, I was not expecting this. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how I screwed up the math there, but okay, let's do this. Um, Another one I have is, uh, it kind of goes off of um, what uh, Lewis is saying there. Some of the... Um, like characters and everything they're going to be announcing and i this is kind of an obvious one but at the same time not i guess like uh, it would vary depending on who you'd ask but i think that um nintendo is going to be announcing some splatoon character for smash or oh. like something like that too soon i think for, <laughs> for me like i just i i uh, i feel like smash brothers is like this thing where you bring the most iconic characters of icons and granted some characters are not icons in that in that game but Generally speaking, they they tend to be high caliber, and I think Splatoon is too new to uh, put in there. I'm gonna kind of disagree because like they brought the Fire Emblem characters that are kind of really new, like Lucina and Robin. Like they, yeah. I I know it's not as new, but like considering when like I think Smash Bros came out like maybe less than two years after Fire Emblem Awakening came out. So I don't know. I I think it's possible that they do some sort of crossover to promote the games because they really need those games to sell. You know. So yeah, that that's kind of one reason why I was thinking. Even though yes, it is it is very soon to do something like that. I think it would be really good as far as the cross promotion stuff. That's like one reason why I think it'd be really good timing for it. Plus, it right. seems like the game has universal acclaim across the board anyway. So I don't think anybody's really going to be mad about that, except some like super like diehard Smash purist. And that's about it. Right. Okay. I I think it's a cool prediction. Like 
Uh, and again, if it will, if you want, we don't know, but it's kind of a cool thing to hope for, I guess, because it could be a very fun character, you know, like, if oh, you yeah. can paint, if you can, like, somehow slide through the stage and that kind of stuff, like, I don't know, like, probably the slide would be, like, maybe the the row could be, like, sliding in the ground or whatever. Yeah. As a, yeah. That and all the, oh. all the variations of different, like, weapons and everything lend themselves very well to different smash attacks, like, they have long range, short range stuff and everything, like, the character itself would work really well and translate really well into Smash. I agree. That's cool. So, uh, do your yeah. Uh, you can do your third one as well if you have it. Oh yeah, I've got a. I've I've come up with like six of them since I've been sitting here. But uh. Oh okay. <laughs> let me let me pick one here. One of them that I'm really hoping for that would be fantastic is um. This is also this is partially because of a Kickstarter that's doing fucking fantastic right now. And um, I just realized I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on your show or anything, but. Oh no, the, the, okay. that's fine. <laughs> Just making sure. I, I didn't even think about that. But uh, I, I, I don't think I have it marked as explicit. But I, I don't think they're gonna like put us down. I don't think like there's someone from Apple listening to all of them. And but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, there, there's been a, a Kickstarter recently that I actually backed and everything. So I really want this game. Is um, it was a bunch of the guys from Rare broke off, and they're making a game called Ukulele, which is pretty yeah. much a Banjo Kazooie clone. Yep, and I saw that. One thing I'm really hoping for is just because of how well that's been doing, and I hope maybe they've had it kind of in the works anyways. I'm hoping that uh, Microsoft and Rare and everything have been working on an actual back to form Banjo Kazooie game, because oh, that cool. would be something that's fantastic. And even if they haven't been yet, this could be like with uh, how Ukulele has been going and everything. This could be something that pushes them like, oh wow, people really do actually want really good, like colorful, fun 3D platformers again, like. Because that's the one thing that kind of just died off and never came back for no real reason. So yeah. my, my counter to that is, <laughs> would a more realistic prediction be that Banjo and Kazooie pack for Project Spark, like the way Conker was in that? Mm, I, could I can definitely it. see that happening. I mean, that, that would be a really easy thing to do. But that's that's not the thing I'm hoping for. What I'm really hoping for is just a, a <laughs> yeah. Banjo Kazooie thing. That's uh, that, not that nuts would and bolts. Be so lame, man. Like, <laughs> I I don't want another Banjo Kazooie car game. No, that's <laughs> that's not what Banjo Kazooie is. Just go. Also, people... I was gonna say go watch the John Tron on that if if you don't understand. Oh, that was okay. a good one. <laughs> Um, do people even care for this Project Spark, Louis? Because, like, honestly, I haven't heard, like, anything about it since the release. No, I don't think people do. Uh, I actually kind of, I was intrigued last year when they did the unveil of Project Spark at E3, just because Conquer was in it. And I thought that, and I got a little mad whenever I, I got Project Spark. I It was free. I got the free version, the, like, the one that's kind of, like, limiting or whatever. Uh, but... Project Spark was supposed to me was supposed to be like, oh, you can just build your own Conquer game and everything. And that didn't even, it wasn't even there at launch. It just got launched, what, a few months ago or something like that? And it's right. apparently, from what I hear, it's it's kind of like a little lackluster, but also not really lackluster. I, like some people who are very creative and have a lot of time on their hands, they're able to actually recreate and build an actual Conquer game, from what I hear. Okay. Uh, I would love to actually see another Conquer game, too. <laughs> yes. Those right. things are great. You and me both. <laughs> yeah. I hope Microsoft does something, like, useful with hair, because, like, they were only working on, like, Connect Sports or something before, and they've been, like, they've been not doing anything for, like, three years now, so that, I think that's, like, a very solid one, like, that they, they could be working on something cool. Wait. That they, they show it at A3. What, what if like, the Conquer thing for Spark last year was kind of foreshadowing for them showing off a new Conquer game this year? Oh, I didn't even shit. think about that till just now. Nice. It could be a thing. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't even, like, I never played, like, the original, like, I don't even know how it was like, to be honest, the original Conquer game. I just know the character, because, like, I've seen it, like, in images in the internet, and people are, like, making fun of it and stuff, but, like, I don't know. But, yeah, that that was a, an interesting era, the era of the 3D platformers. I wish Sonny would bring back uh, Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot as well, like, oh, I mean, we talked about it, and it's one of those, like, I love Crash Bandicoot back in the day, and kind of, like, stopped existing, and now I think we might have moved on from that, but we'll see. Roberto, All right. do your third prediction. Third prediction. I think that Microsoft will show off either Gears of War HD Collection or the next game in the series, like a, a prequel Gears of War or Gears of War 5. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, doesn't it was, wasn't it already shot down that there's going to be a, a Marcus Phoenix collection that's just going to be Gears 1 and that's it? Just Gears 1 remastered? There's. I was going to say, I, I think the Gears collection has already been announced, but go ahead, Roberto. It's not that, I don't think it's been announced, but it's been leaked. And there's been like screens showing up on the internet, so I think okay. Microsoft will either seal the deal 
they're they either say this is a full collection or if they're going to do a new game in the series. But I think that's what they're going to do. Uh, I think I think it's good timing for Gears. Yeah, but we'll see. A little too safe, uh, Roberto. A little too safe. I love too safe. Too safe. <laughs> that's like, like literally, it's going to be one or right. the other. Well, no just countering everyone, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm very good. I'm very good at thinking this. I'm thinking these things out. But I don't think my predictions are any better than yours, though. I tell you that much. All right, go ahead then. Just just do your third one. Okay, my third one. Okay, let's pick. I'm gonna pick this one. Um, okay. Well, mine's going to be an either or, actually. Actually, no, I take that back. It's not an either or. It's actually two predictions in one. All right. So Microsoft will reveal their design, the look and the look and design of the controller and the console for the Halo 5 uh, console. And it will ship with one terabytes. And uh, it's also they're also going to at the same time um, unveil a mul- another multiplayer beta for Halo 5 as well to go with that. Okay. One terabyte. That's, that's uh I don't yeah. I, I don't know about that. That's uh, If they did it for Call of Duty, they will do it for Halo. Halo is their beloved franchise. I Wait, I did just... they did they do it for Call of Duty? Yes, mm-hmm. Advanced Warfare. Yeah, they had their oh. little uh, gold and gray silvery controller and I think that they're going to do a uh, a design, you know, how like they it's not going to be black, it's not going to be white, but it's actually going to be like a Halo themed box with the Halo themed controller. It's going to have 1 terabyte in there and then it's going to have like a uh, it's going to probably ship the same day it's that halo 5 ships it's gonna have halo 5 packed in there with a little digital code it's gonna okay it's perfect it's beautiful i'm I'm gonna say that like a a halo console when a new halo is coming out is kind of a safe bet as well but because you're adding the other stuff in there that's fine i'm gonna gonna (laughs) accept that the the terabyte (laughs) thing was the only thing that kind of threw it off for me i was like i don't know about that that's a lot yeah like and the beta and the beta too yeah, it it would depend if the sales, like if they got good sales for the Call of Duty one, which I don't know about actually, because that was kind of weird. Because like the 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 console was more expensive because of the one terabyte, but it didn't really come with anything special, like other than the design. I was hmm. all right. I don't know. Dude. So we'll see. To Did it come with the digital though, code? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I don't. I don't even know. Oh. To be fair, though. People I've talked to that have Xbox Ones only have like three or four games, and all of their memory is gone already. <laughs> like all of it is gone already, and they only have three or four games. So them releasing wow. a terabyte console is useful. It's going to be more expensive, but people are going to want to get it because they only have enough memory to hold like five games. Right. So it's a more secretly, that. it's a brilliant business plan because they're like hey look at these new consoles that have twice the memory and you can have twice as many games but well, also, I forgot. is that because uh, oh, go oh, ahead. God. no I, I was gonna say that uh uh amazon didn't like amazon leak uh um the ps4 uh redesign that they were gonna have two uh ad versions of it the the 500 gig version and the one terabyte version like shipped in and i think I figure... sony officially said they had they were gonna have a one terabyte Mm. PS4? Yeah, PS4, I think they yeah. officially said it. I, I, I'm doing fine with my PS4 so far, but it's not like I have a lot of like big games so far. So CJ, you were going to say something there. Go ahead. Yeah, it was just an actual question, because I, I don't know like anything about the new consoles and everything, so I don't care about them. But um, with like uh, Xbox One, or, like, are you required to actually have it like install the game on the hard drive to play it, or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the way the way the, these new consoles work with the PS4 and the Xbox One, um, they... Uh, they basically install the disc to the hard drive, and then you basically use the disc as a way of unlocking that content. So it basically okay. uses it as, as a security check, as a pass to to play, basically. It makes sense and everything. I, I just didn't really know that. that. That explains why, like, hard drives would be full. And it does make a, a one terabyte much more likely now, uh, yeah. at least in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, that... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Okay. My prediction yeah. also included a beta. That's important too. Okay. <laughs> I think. Yeah. See, the thing is, I think separately, all the things are kind of safe. So, like being like, oh yeah, there's gonna be a Halo Five beta. That kind of makes sense, right? Because they did that before for like the. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, they, they they already did one like last year or whatever. Well, right? didn't, yeah. Wasn't there like a denial? Wasn't there like a denial that there would be a second beta or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I was just going to say, but putting them out together is what makes the prediction kind of harder because like how all those things would have to be met for your prediction to be right. Oh, I've, I've got a question about the prediction here. Do you have a prediction on the exact uh, or the, the main color for it? Because I'm not sure if I heard not that. A, 
Not a clue. No, not a clue. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking, trying to make I, this harder, man. Because <laughs> I was I was thinking they would do like a hit like Master Chief Green, but that looks ugly in my mind. So I'm thinking like a red and blue fusion, like way they do red versus blue, and like the way like the the cover has the two uh, the two teams of Spartans fighting against each other. I was thinking kind of like that, but I don't know. Okay. I was thinking more Guardian related, like they'll make it a Halo Five themed. Like, what, what does that mean? Like what? What, what color? Guardians is that? <laughs> are like orange and black. Oh, okay. So mm. I can see that. All right. So who's next? Who hasn't done the third that one? Would oh, be Clacker. Me. So one game I would be super excited for if it was announced, and I don't think it's been announced yet. I, I don't been, mess this up. It might have been <laughs> teased. Great. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's been teased. Um, but. I don't think we've seen any gameplay and we don't know any official date for it yet. But the game I'm talking about is Mirror's Edge 2. Oh, they've, they, they've talked about it, Quacker. They've Quaker. talked about <laughs> it, but have they announced they, an official date for it? Not a well, date, but they did show some stuff about it last year, I okay. believe. Yeah. All right. Then never mind. I got another prediction lined up. <laughs> so okay. the other prediction I have is that Sony will release... Um, DLC content, they will announce DLC content for the new PS4 game, Bloodborne. The reason I'm predicting this for, is for several reasons. One, if they did this, um, it would kind of appeal to the masses because a lot of people like the Bloodborne games. And currently, there's not that many PS4 exclusives on the Sony D- just, system. Just to correct one thing. I know, really I was going to say, sorry, I, like, there's I, only one. There's only one Bloodborne. <laughs> what? There's only one Bloodborne game. You're probably missing it. Uh, 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 mixing it with uh, Dark Souls stuff, but they're different. Uh, I know. Franchises. Did I they're... say Bloodborne too? I don't know. It's uh, no. It's just because you said Bloodborne games, and oh, I just said there's uh, only uh, Bloodborne one. Bloodborne games. Yeah, my bad. But, but Bloodborne game. Um, the Bloodborne game is one of the only. Uh, well, Big it is. It is a really good exclusive on the PS4. And if they announced more content for it, it would make a lot of people happy. Um, so okay. I'm I predicting think, uh, they're going to do that. Didn't Shuya Yoshida tweet it out that they're working on DLC content for that game? I think they did. I think he but, did, but there hasn't been, like, an official, like, hey, this is what's going to happen, or all right. something like not that. On, and then also they didn't even, like, it was just a tweet confirming that they're working on it. It's not even, literally no details have been given about what actually, will actually be there, like, what the content is. I think is. I've seen this tweet, and it was a very generic thing, like, yeah, we know that people like Bloodborne, and we're considering working on the, or something like that, you know, like, I don't think they explicitly said it so and, and also we don't really know anything about it so i'm gonna let clacker have his thing let's let's okay. <laughs> all right let's not mess him anymore <laughs> but okay i guess that leaves me with my uh third and then i'll do after my fourth prediction uh starting the fourth round so let's see okay uh my third prediction is that sony will show a new ps4 exclusive first party develop game that will use the morpho headset and will come out in 2016 so They've been showing the their virtual reality thing. The more I think I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce the thing, but I think it's Morpheus. Morpheus. Yes. Right? Morpheus. Mm-hmm. Yes. So they've been showing the Morpheus a few times already, uh, but they haven't shown like uh, like a big title for it. There's there there only like been demos so far, I think. Right. So I think they're gonna take some time into their press conference to be like, "This is our plans for Morpheus," and they're gonna show like a big title. That uh is gonna come out in 2016 with the in the day the Morpheus comes out, so it's gonna be like their big launch title and uh, so like a like a packing game first party like a packing game yeah pretty much but it will be one of the, the I, I think it will be it may be a new IP but I think it's more more, more likely that it will be one of their franchises so something like God of War I don't know like um and it may be like a mini game of one of their franchises so maybe like an Uncharted spin off or something like that you know. Um, well, the one it would work the best with would actually be Gran Turismo, because oh, racing yeah. games work beautifully with VR. Like, I tried to uh, play a set of Corsa at ITSEC whenever I was there on the um, Oculus Rift, and oh my god, it was amazing driving around a track and actually looking around in the car and everything was fucking great. Oh man, yeah, that's right. Like, I don't, I don't think they've, like, when was, when did the last Gran Turismo came out? Like, I feel like it's been a couple of years, right? Uh, uh, I think Gran Turismo came out, like, two, yeah, like, three years ago or something. Yeah, I, I could see them showing a new Grand Turismo for the Morpheus. That would be, like, really solid. Especially because uh, Microsoft will be showing the new Forza, I think. Right? Forza 6. Probably. Yep. So, yeah. So it would be... Yeah, I, I, I think that's the best bet. Grand Turismo for the Morpheus. I'm going to go with that. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> 
I, I just mentioned it because it's something I really want. I I want virtual reality for racing sims so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, man, like, that would be super legit. Like, I, I'm not big on racing games, but, like, there was a time when I would play, like, Gran Turismo on the PSU and everything where I really liked them. I just kind of, like, got sick of it after a while. But that would that would get me back into it, I feel. So, Dan, Gotta I get a racing a... wheel. Makes it better. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't have a counter to your, your point, actually. I just had a question about your, your prediction. So... Go ahead. Um... The biggest thing that Nintendo does is they, generally speaking, they have like a a, a killer app at launch. Like the Super Nintendo had Super Mario World, uh, Nintendo 64 had uh, uh, Super Mario 64. Mario 64. Um, so my question is: is this is this game that like like I guess in your case, Gran Turismo, is it going to be a pack-in game that you when you buy the Morpheus, you get the game automatically, or is it going to be sold separately? Here's the thing: um, one of the problem with peripherals is that uh, a lot of times. Either people don't buy them at all, or like some people buy them, but not enough to justify that the developers should make more games for them. So I feel like if they made it, like, I feel like they could make Gran Turismo 6, all right, or no, whatever the next one is, I think it's 7, I don't know, with um, an optional Morpheus functionality, and then make a pack in that's kind of cheap with the, for the Morpheus with Gran Turismo, or pretty much like if you buy the Morpheus, you get Gran Turismo for free, that mm-hmm. would be one. An extra incentive for people to buy the Morpheus is they get Gran Turismo, and then they can play it with the Morpheus, so it would add value to that package. And by doing that, there will probably be a lot more people um, that... I feel like because Gran Turismo is such a big franchise for Sony, I think that would help a lot get like a big audience like that owns that, so that other developers can start adding it in. But you're, you're, yeah, I guess a good point is that I don't think... I don't think it's going to be necessarily required. Because if they make it required and they only sell the game for the Morpheus or whatever, then Gran Turismo 6 will definitely not sell as much as it would if it was just like a $60 game, a regular $60 game. So I don't know. I feel like they will add value to the, to the Morpheus bundle, but I don't think that will be the only way to play the game. So yeah, that's my point. I, I think right. they would never make it required because Gran Turismo 7 is, or just the Gran Turismo franchise in general, just one of their biggest franchises. Or one yeah. of their bigger ones, not one of the biggest, but it's it's a big franchise. And well, is reason it Gran I, I, six like their highest selling game on the PS3? I what don't is, know. I didn't look at the sell figures. Yeah, uh, it sells a lot. I don't know like what exactly is the position, but yeah, it sells a lot. I I know they always sell really well, even if they're not like top figures. I know they're they're within like probably the top fifty of the or top twenty probably of the console. Like they're they're pretty solid. Um. All right. So. You guys have anything else on that? No. On oh the, yeah, I was gonna say okay. I, I looked at the numbers and it's number it ranks number five. Uh, Gran Turismo Five has ten million, uh, and Grand Theft Auto Three. I'm sorry, so, Grand Theft Auto Five. Excuse me, has the most. Is number one, and the other two, three, and four were, were Call of Duty games. Yeah. There you oh, go. Okay. Yeah. Pretty solid. Um. All right. So my fourth prediction is, you guys know a company called That Game Company. Yeah. They're the makers of Flow, Flower, and Journey. All right. Never heard. And of it. the last game. Go ahead. Never heard of it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you never heard of the game um, Journey? It's it's kidding. He's thinking, yeah. Um so they they uh, since Journey came out on uh, I think it was 2012, they haven't shown anything, but what I do know about them that they have talked about is that they're they're working on multi-platform games now. So they're not re- uh, really tied into Sony anymore. And they are uh going to work with uh touch controls. They said they they want to do something with touch, all right? So that leads most people to to think about mobile, mobile, I think. But my prediction is that they will show up at the Sony conference because of their long relation, long and fruitful relationship with Sony, and they're gonna show a new game that's very unique and imaginative, just like Journey and Flower were. That is for the PS4, but it's not an exclusive. But they're gonna show it on the on the Sony conference for the PS4, and they're obviously not gonna talk about like how it's coming out to the other places, but it's 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 gonna come out to other places eventually, and I think it's gonna use the touchpad. On the PS4 controller, like very specific prediction, but that kind of game company on the Sony conference, new game using the touchpad on the PS4 controller. That's what I think they're gonna do, and I'm really excited about that because, like, I fucking love Journey, and uh, I I recently played Flower for the first time, and I I thought that was really cool as well. Just just like very unique and different games, and um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they're gonna do next. I, I've been waiting for something else from them since Journey. I could have sworn that wasn't uh, Journey supposed to be ported to the PS4. Oh yeah, that's right. Actually, I, I even wrote this down, but I forgot to, to read it. Um, yeah, I think they're gonna show Journey on the PS4, right? And then they're gonna be like, "But besides Journey, we also have something else coming to the PS4." And then they're gonna show their new game. Ah, uh, 
good that's one. what i think you're gonna that do. one more thing yeah. mentality yeah yeah exactly um so yeah that was my fourth prediction so let's do the fourth round now and then we'll see who else has a, a fifth one uh let's go with i don't even remember the order anymore why did i clicker wasn't it wasn't it clicker next I think it was Roberta than me. Oh. No. Uh, whatever. Just just go, Clicker. <laughs> okay. Well, I am going to... That's how I do things in here, CJ. This is my I... podcast. <laughs> I remember I was third, so I'm always... I'm always... I'm in the middle. I'm smack down in the middle. That's how I know it. I, okay. I am going to predict that 2K Games is going to release gameplay footage of Borderlands 3. Um, you they son recent... of a bitch. They recently released Borderlands prequel, but I actually found out that it wasn't done by the same people that did Borderlands 2. I would be really excited if they announced Borderlands 3, because Borderlands is a very solid game uh, when it comes to not only just looting, their looting system and everything like that, but the story they always have in those games are fun to play. There's always one jackass villain who mocks the shit out of you, and you just want to fucking get to the end to beat the shit out of him. And if they master that and do that in the third game too... I'll buy it and I'll enjoy it just as much as I did the second one. Um, I'm yeah. interested. The prequel did a lot of interesting things. I'm interested to see if they're going to incorporate those into the third one. They did a lot of um, stuff with weapon grinding where you can throw weapons into a grinder and then it spits out another weapon. I'm interested to see if they're going to expand upon that mechanic, make it more solid, make it better. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Uh, but the prequel did like a couple unique things that they could have incorporated into the next big major game, aka Borderlands 3. So I'm predicting that. I'm hoping it's going to happen. I'm sorry, CJ. Was, I think it's solid. That was my next prediction. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh. CJ. <laughs> okay. Well, luckily, so... you're last, so you have time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I, I think that's a solid prediction. Um, I never played the first Borderlands. I played Borderlands 2, but I never beat it. Uh, but yeah, I can I can see them doing it. They, they probably had the time to work on it already because I don't think the pre sequel took that many resources because they were using the the same engines and everything. So maybe they could have split the teams. And, well, like, it keep was one working. It was done by and, a completely separate team. I think there were like yeah, a separate team in was, Australia that did it. Yep, it was a separate team oh, in Australia. Shit. It was not the main people that worked on Borderlands Two. So literally, the people who have worked on Borderlands 2 could have been working on Borderlands 3 this entire time yeah. since they oh, released man. the last DLC which was Tiny Tina's like Assault on Dungeon Keep yeah right which I think was, it's what it's called yeah, best DLC I, I, I was gonna say Siege on du uh, Dungeon Dragon Keep but I wasn't sure but anyways that was the best DLC period because you played D&D &D, the video game and Tiny Tina was the DM and that was just fantastic yes. um so yeah, pretty much also, anything I've seen with like Ashley Birch in it has been fucking great. Like she did yeah. that character perfect. She did, and you got to meet um Butt Stallion. Yes, <laughs> which was awesome. Anyways, enough referencing that. Uh, I'm excited for that, and it'd be cool to see that announced. I just realized if I ever need a secondary Steam name, it's probably gonna be a variation of Butt Stallion. <laughs> that's pretty great. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I just remember that's your. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> I was about to say something that I probably shouldn't. Oh, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, something that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't talk right. about that, Dad. All right. Um, okay, so now, I, I think, just, just to add a little bit, uh, I think Borderlands Street, not only super viable, it could be, like, really legit. Like, it could be it could, it could be a lot better in, 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 how can I put it? Like, with this many time that they've been working it, on it, I wouldn't expect just, like, something similar to what I was seeing before is what I'm saying. Like, they could come up with something like really different. And so I think that's something to be excited about. All right. So now, Lewis, go ahead. All right. This is probably going to be my safest prediction that I've done yet. But I all of yours have been anyways. safe, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So Bethesda will, will announce a Fallout 4 street date for 2015 and uh, an open beta oh. during E3 week. Oh, OK. So you think. All right. So you think the game is going to release in 2015 is what you're saying. And they're going to stick to a street date that they'll announce. So if they'll do like okay. like September 15th or whatever, whatever day they pick, it's going to come out on that day. It's going to it's going to come out before year end and we're going to know what day, what day that is during E3, during their press. If anything, I think that's... That, if anything this year it's going to probably be holiday, I think. If they're going to like yeah. do it for this year. 
Because I, I don't think like just a couple months is going to be enough. Even with what they've shown, it still looks like they need to have polish on a few extra things. So I don't really know. I, I think it'd be we'll later see. this year if they do that. Or Fallout 4. I don't know if the Fallout 4 will come out this year. I can see it coming out next year, but I don't know about this year. We'll see. I, I can I can see it being the big holiday game, I think. Like, there's just too many the, big, the big holiday game. holiday games. It's going to be an overcrowded there's, market. Yeah, but, there's well, there's there's been well, a lot How many are there this year? Like what are the big holiday games this year besides like the, the always the present new, Call of Duty? The new Zelda? <laughs> no, it's that. No, 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 no they delayed 2016. No, they delayed it. Never yeah. mind. Yes. Uh John Charter was delayed, but here's the big games. They got Microsoft has just one every month. They got what? The Tomb Raider, they got Forza, they got um uh what's Halo. it? Halo. Halo and uh, yeah. And then there's also uh, other third party ones like like Star Wars, uh, Battlefront and um uh, let's see here. Other I'm trying to think of other ones. Call of Duty is going to come out. There's going to I just feel like there's like a lot coming out this year. And I can't think of them at the top of my yeah. head. Soon. I will say though, Louis, that like I think September is too fucking soon because like they just shown it for the first yeah. time, you know. Like I, uh, like, I don't know. Well, I think it, for me, it, just, it makes sense for that game to have been quietly in development this whole time, and they're basically already in like an alpha right now, pretty much. Yeah, but yeah, if they're but in alpha, alpha, like that takes a long time to get to beta, then it takes a long time to get to gold after that too. And then gold like if they're in alpha, try fixing all the bugs, and if you can't fix all the bugs, and bug fixing is a hot, like it's a long ass process. The bigger the game, the more bug fixes you're gonna have. So I'm wait, 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 Clacker. But it's a Bethesda game. They can release it with bugs. That's no problem with that. <laughs> Shadows, Shots fired. Shots Shadows, fired. Dan. You see, Shadows I... and a granted the giant like flying you through the sky was intentional <laughs> but still they're shadows that was a bug all right let's see let's cj talk see the thing is with this i i will be completely fine if they wait till the end of 2016 if they keep delaying and everything just to make sure it's not super fucking buggy right i will be completely okay with that work on it for another year make it actually not buggy but i i know bethesda can't make a game that's not buggy but whatever <laughs> Well, that's because the games are too big. Like, there's yeah, so much. And, like, that's because... play, like, the QA for that game must be fucking insane. Like, like I can't even imagine. It's because, because we have to replicate worlds. something. <laughs> yeah, like, because <laughs> we've... We, well, some of us have seen and, like, done QA before. And, like, even with very simple things, it can already be annoying as fuck, like, to replicate bugs and stuff. Imagine with something like Skyrim or Fallout. Like, holy oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Um, like, they literally mm -hmm. create worlds. And because they create worlds, you have to bug test an entire world. Like, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So, so is there going to be a beta this w in E3 week or no? Or is that... Or am I reaching on that one? I, I think they wouldn't let anybody play it except like the executives on stage this year i think they'd or probably like do it next closed. year then it'd be released oh uh, maybe yeah doors. Closed doors, man. be heavily restricted press or something like that but I, I i do not think anyone who just like shows up on the show floor will be able to play it i think you'd have to have them invite you to play it and then i think maybe next year would be when they'd um actually have it like fully open everyone to play it and everything because either they just released it or they're about to release it because i could see them doing like june july september or something like that next year right okay also there will probably be um uh dlc and mods and stuff coming out like after releases and everything so they this game could could be only three in some shape or form for a while but uh yeah. we'll see i also don't think it's that close but it's, some people are betting it is so i don't know it's i think it's divisive at this point roberto do your fourth prediction fourth prediction Alrighty. so as you've noticed in the past couple e3s like ubisoft has been bringing up some new stuff Patriots got reworked into Siege and Tom Clancy's, uh, what's that other one? Oh, whatever. Uh, the new one that they have for Tom Clancy. I'm sorry, I don't follow Tom Clancy games that much. I do I do know Rainbow Six Siege looks really cool. Right. Oh, uh, isn't The Division? Yes, that one. The so Division, both of those, is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, both of those have pretty much received really good followings from people. So I think that they're going to probably reboot Splinter Cell, because I don't think the last two have really done anything for the fans. They need to go back to just pure stealth again, man. Like, Chaos Theory was the epitome of what Splinter Cell should be. Chaos Theory was fucking great. Right, so I feel like they're gonna do something like that. Maybe do, like, Splinter Cell Origins or some BS to call it a reboot. Okay, well, that's solid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just want to mention, I'm I'm really happy that we're kind of being, like, covering all the conferences here today. Because, like, you just brought up Ubisoft. We did, like, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo Prediction, Square Enix before. Oh, God. Like, Bethesda, games. a lot. Yeah. I, I just like, realized that 
Splinter Cell is... It, it is under Ubisoft, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, God, it's probably going to be terrible then if they try to reboot it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have against Ubisoft, man? I have all lost the Assassin's all faith Creed in games. them. Oh, no, I, I, I stopped playing those after, like, the second one. Well, that's but, what I'm like, saying. Like, that's, that's, every, that's my point. <laughs> like, everything I've gotten from them recently has just been complete trash and just not running right or not looking right or heavily gra- graphical downgraded and still not running right like Watch Dogs and just so many problems. Like, I don't trust Ubisoft. Like, they're they're significantly worse than EA to me now. I trust. Like, I, holy oh, shit. damn. Oh, worse. my God. Shots fired. First off. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... Shots fired. that's... <laughs> Uh, I I wouldn't agree with that. EA is I, still garbage. EA is more garbage than Ubisoft. Ubisoft slowly well, EA, getting there, but EA is really bad. EA has a lot of stuff lined up. Yeah, is well. any of it gonna be good? Probably not. Battlefront, we'll Battle 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 Battlefront, man, that's gonna be my jam. <laughs> Berto, I am so scared for Battlefront. I'm not even gonna lie. It scares me to death that EA has control over that game. Like, they took out I... space combat already. You realize how much that crushed me when they said that? Like, oh, man. I, <laughs> I didn't know you were there... getting heated. I wanted there to be a campaign in that game so badly, too. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's... CJ? <laughs> I was just going to say, I didn't know Clicker was so emotionally invested in this. Yeah, man. Like, I, I was about to say, I think when I edit this, I'm going to have to turn him down like 10 decibels on this part. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, like, super loud. Um, EA just, ah. Uh... I, I'm not. I'm not gonna get into EA because I'll extend this longer than it needs to be. But I but was gonna still, say this... to CJ. I was gonna say to CJ. I do trust UbiArt games. I, I mean, Rayman Legends is probably my favorite Ubisoft game, or probably one of my favorite games of the Wii U, just in general. But you know, yeah. Just saying. No, Rayman Legends and Rayman Origins were fantastic games, and both were also, done by UbiArt. Also, Child of Light and Valiant Hearts are are up there too. Well, yeah, but EA has outliers like that too. Like the Crisis series has always been great. Like there, there are certain franchises that are parts like made by certain divisions of the companies that are going to be great anyway if they have good people. It's just I mean, as I think a whole. in general, EA games are solid. Like they're just like things that people are kind of sick off. Like because like all the sports games, they're not bad games. They're just things that like we probably don't care about anymore. Because, like, they're always the same thing, you know? Yes. Annualized. Yeah. Annualization is evil. No, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. I, I would probably say every a game should come out once every twice or two or three times. Um, once every two to three years. And that would be make right. it better. You mean, like, the Zelda franchise, which says once every five years? Or the Metroid series, which says, like, we'll do three once years every, in a like, row. Whenever they want. And yeah. then ten year break, then we'll release another Metroid. Honestly, I'm surprised that nobody has predicted a new Metroid B uh, yet, but we'll see. Uh, CJ, I've... give us your fourth prediction. Uh, sure, I'll just say what I, I was just gonna say. I, I don't really. I've never really played much, or if, if any, of the Metroid series. So I don't really know about that anyway. So okay, I feel like pointing that out. But uh, anyway, uh, since Borderlands Three was taken from me by Clicker, I'll, <laughs> I guess my my next one is um, it's a Nintendo one. I don't really have a fifth one anymore though. But uh, that's fine. The the thing I'm thinking of with um. Nintendo for this and everything is something I've I've kind of been wanting as well is uh I I want to see them do another big like because they they've they've needed one of these for a while they've needed a good big like expansive and different Mario game like whenever they right. did Sunshine for like the GameCube and everything and stuff like that like they need something big and just grandiose and different again like I would, even if it's just like Super Mario Sunshine two or something. That would be fantastic, because they would literally just print money at that point. But if they keep doing what they're doing with Mario, they're, they're putting out... I mean, they're they're not bad, they're good games, but it's nothing really different. Like, the 3D world or whatever, it's like, eh, whatever. It's it's okay. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Like, I had a lot of fun playing 3D world, to be fair, but it's kind of, it's Super Mario 3D Land, just kind of bigger. Like, it's it's uh, it's very similar to the game they had done on the 3DS with some additions. So, I, 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 I didn't... Uh, while I had fun playing Super Mario 3D World, it was not nearly the same thing I had when I played Super Mario Galaxy, for instance, yeah. which to me felt like, holy shit, this is super different. Like, they're reinventing what plat- what a platformer is. Yeah, yeah, even, whole, like, even like, Galaxy is a good example. If they just do something like that, whether it be Sunshine Galaxy or a whole new, like, series for them or whatever, I I, I want to see them do, like, announce something like that and show off a new big Mario game. Like, big, Pretty different much. Mario 
What you're telling me is you want another 3D Mario game, an actual legit 3D Mario game, because usually it was N64, which then released, like, oh god, look, it's Mario in this, like, 3D, like, crazy environment, and then they released Sunshine, which was amazing, and then Galaxy, which was amazing. They released a 3D Mario game every, I don't know, five years, so it's it's about time. It's about time well, they start well, releasing another It's essentially 3D per, game. per console iteration is what they yeah. do, it seems like. Yeah, Gal- the big Galaxy ones, right? was the one that the, bucked the trend because it had a sequel. But yeah, I think it was yeah. supposed to be like a... It was supposed to start off as like a DLC type experiment that they just basically expanded into its own game. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I want to, like, this year... Uh, is the thirtieth anniversary of of Mario, and they're and they're working on Mario Maker and they're talking about Mario Maker a lot now. And but I would love if they were like, so to round up the year of like the thirtieth birthday of Mario, we're gonna release like this year in November a new big Mario game. And I think that's plausible because it's like I doubt it. I doubt it because in se- doubt it? in September is Mario Maker, and I think all their push is gonna go behind it. And if anything. They'll just support it with, like, official Nintendo release levels or something like that. I think that's going to be the game that they try to continue um, its legs. Oh, that'll I be so hope... disappointing if that is, man. Like, to me, it will be too. Like, because here's the thing. I know a lot of people are excited about Mario Maker Lewis, and I am too. Because I am a fan of old school Mario, and I, I think the idea of people creating levels is cool and everything. But I still feel like the Mario games that I want the most are not, like new levels of the same one i've been playing for 30 years you know it's something different you know it's it's a different kind of platform is what i'm most excited about yeah so because they've done 3d world like it's being uh like by the end of this year it will have been two years since, three, since 3d world. world yeah i think it is plausible that they could be working on a, like that same team could be working on another one because i think um I think Mario Maker is being done by like a whole like different team in there, but we'll see. I don't know. Again, like it's possible that they also are just like, oh, Mario Maker is the Mario game this year or whatever. But that will be a little disappointing for me as well because I've I've been like I've been the last Mario game that I was really really digging was Super Mario Galaxy, and that was 2007 because Galaxy 2 was just more of the same. You know, like it was it was cool, but I I didn't have the same feeling of uniqueness that I felt the same first Galaxy game or the other ones before that. And then uh, 3D Land was was cool and, and 3D World was cool, but I don't think any of those compared. And I I'm really hungry for like a big Mario title, and I don't think Mario Maker's that either. Like, See, I, I I'm sorry. I I just want to I guess rephrase and more specify what I was saying. Is that I, I didn't say that it would be coming out this year. So it could be the whole push oh, right, for this right. year for the big game they're going to release is Mario Maker. But it'd be like next year, maybe even like early of the year after that, that they'd actually release this right. big new 3D crazy Mario. So say maybe like just a first look, right? Like just a teaser. Yeah, just so cool. just so people can know about it. So they can be like, holy shit, that looks amazing. I want this. And then go right. spend all their pre-order money on it. Because that's what people do now. <laughs> all right, we'll see. I'm hoping for it. All right, so who... Oh, we just we just finished the fourth round. Everybody did four predictions. Who has a fifth one right now? I do. Who are the people who do? I do. You do, Robert? Do you have a fifth one? Yeah. Louis? Yes. All right. So so we'll do every one, okay? And then um, uh, CJ, you can think of a fifth one while we do it, or if you don't, that's well, I mean, fine. I, like we'll just say you had the same as Clacker. I've, I've got something here, but it's not like anything crazy or anything like that. It's just I'm. It, it's more something I'm just looking forward to that I think is a given already, which is. A lot more of the new Wii U Zelda with a bunch of gameplay and a significant amount more details. Like, I want to know what the world is, what the story is, and a variety of stuff like that. So you think uh, you think Nintendo bummer, lied? Because here's the thing. I don't think he knows about that. this, Lewis. Please don't cry, CJ. Nintendo, when they delayed Zelda, they also said it's not going to be at this year's E3. Oh. Huh. They could have lied. Well, how, how did they say it's not going to be there? As in there will be no details on it, or there, it's not going to be there for people to play? So they're two different things. I don't think they were clear on that. But yeah, I, they, they, I think it was, what, what was it, Louis? It was like a tweet? Uh, no, it was or, like, like an official release? statement from AJ Anuma, and it was really, really long and prolonged. And he was talking about how um, it's not like the Zelda is not going to be a priority to, to release in 2015. And then along that same paragraph, they were, he was said that, um, that, that it's not going to be at E3 um, at all because Nintendo simply wants to focus on 2015 games. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing. I I don't know how much of that could be a, like misinterpreted translations because that happens a lot. But I 
I, I really think it makes sense <laughs> for them to show Zelda. But then since they said that, it's like, oh, okay, so they said they're not. But I, I want to hope for more. But that also makes me scared that it's way farther that, than we think. You know? Like, that it's... Okay, I, I just found an actual Nintendo of America tweet saying, and have decided not to show it at E3. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope but, they do anyway, okay. and they just troll people with it. All right. <laughs> yep, that's good. I, th I think that when they said that, it was, uh, it was April 1st. So they could be like, hey, Rufus, here's Zelda. Here's everything about Zelda. It comes out this year, whatever. Like, a man can dream, right? Yeah. All right. I need to step that, out. I'll be right back in a sec. Continue right. on okay. without me. I'll be right back. Sure, sure. That's that's uh, pretty much all I have, though, for this. So. That, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Roberto, what do you have? So. Or fifth. I think I'm going to give my probably riskiest prediction, but. Oh. There, there it comes. There it comes. Mm. I think at the Sony conference, we will see The Last of Us 2. Dun, dun, dun. What? <laughs> what? I don't think that makes any the sense. The laughter so, of us. <laughs> so I know that they they do have their hands full. Naughty Dog has their hands full with Uncharted Four. But if they can reveal less, The Last of Us Two, along with like Uncharted Four, that'll probably really boost the confidence in the PS4. But how could they possibly <laughs> like? See, that's the thing. So hold on. It's like... I haven't finished The Last of what? Us. Oh, oh no, no, okay. no! I, I wasn't going to spoil it. But by the way, you should totally finish that. I know. Game, all right. I, know. I wasn't. I wasn't going to talk about the story. All right, what did I miss? Um, what I was. All right. Okay. Roberto just predicted that Sony's going to show the Last of Us two, and I said I'm saying that this is impossible. Yeah. And my like. That's why I said it's my yeah, riskiest like, prediction. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing, Roberto. Naughty Dog has always worked on one game at a time, right? They did Uncharted one, Uncharted two, Uncharted three, uh, Last of Us, Uncharted four. So now that they're working on Uncharted 4, that the game has already been delayed. Maybe, maybe it was delayed because like, of Last of Us 2. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, actually, actually, uh, like during uh, um, Naughty Dog, they they have two teams. Actually, um, it was during uh, Uncharted 3 that they split off and make a second team and made The Last of Us, as my understanding. Oh shit! That's right. Because oh, in in, in okay. Uncharted 3, there's a, a Last of Us Easter egg. Hmm. Okay, I will say this: The Last of Us came out. Halfway through 2013, right? Right. And then halfway through 2014, they released the remastered edition, which was for the PS4, right? Right. That means that they have their engine running in the PS4, and that they did one year of work on it, right? Because because they talked about how like it wasn't as easy as they expected, and they wanted to make it really good and everything, and they want to just do like they didn't want to just make like a uh, a bad a dirty uh, quick port, right? Yeah. So I think. You, you could imagine that, like, there could be a team that has been, would take that engine that is already done anyway. It kind of make, like, just focus on making a different story, like a different content. And that they could possibly show it at Dizzy 3, uh, to release next year or something like So, okay, I guess it's possible. But yeah, it's very risky. Like, I doubt it. But I, I can see how it would be possible if they have two teams then. All right. Klecker. All right. That was your, your last. Fifth prediction. Should I go with risky or a little bit safer? I'll go with risky. I'll go risky. Just do risky like, just go fun. crazy. Yeah. Risky. Alrighty. Then my risky move would probably be um that. So there was. It actually has to do with the Morpheus. Um, okay. that you were talking about earlier. So there was a game that was was released. Um, I think it was last E3, but it was called No Man's Skies or No Man's Sky. You guys remember this? Yeah, they. It was announced, not released. It was announced. All right. Well, yeah. I'm predicting that they're going to attach onto No Man's Skies the Morpheus. It'd be cool okay. if they did this because you literally pretty much kind of like. The game's already kind of like you're in a first-person cockpit mode, and if you had the Morpheus on, and you could, like, look around, like, and look behind you as you're flying around, that'd be really cool. Um, okay. it'd be really neat. Clacker, I'm gonna say something. I think this is probably your best prediction today, so <laughs> congratulations. I think, <laughs> I think that's great. I, th I think that's, that's very solid, like, because, because that game looks pretty awesome. It would be a great way to, to sell some Morpheus units to get people excited. And that game, like, it is first person, and it's about exploring the universe. Like, exploring a uh, procedurally generated universe, I believe. Yep. And how, how awesome would that be, like, if you were really feeling it, that you were in there, you know? So, I, I think that's really solid. I, I would love to see that. 
Yep. Any counterpoint, Lewis? I have no counterpoint. <laughs> I actually have to agree with uh, with that prediction because I think No Man's Sky was already supposed to come out um, by now, actually. And with all the delay that it delays that it had, it makes sense to that there maybe the develop the indie development team has like a and it has their chance to to fiddle around with the Morpheus uh, uh, unit. What does it call it? What do you call those things whenever you got like an uh, a demo, a developer unit, or whatever you call it. Uh, a dev kit. kit. Right, right. A dev, a dev kit. kit. That's, that's what I was trying to think of. It's the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's solid. All right. So, Louis, why don't you go ahead and tell us your last one? All right. My final prediction is, uh, is a square uh, prediction. And okay. so I predict that uh, during their, their presser, they're going to end their press conference with a, uh, a, a cinematic trailer, not a gameplay trailer, a cinematic trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3 with the 2016 holiday release window hmm. announced. I'd be cool with that. That that would probably get me to buy a PS4. Okay. I'm pretty uh, sure both me and Roberto would be pretty excited for that. I felt like that one is a hard that one's a harder reach cuz I don't think they're that game is anywhere near finished, but you know, I don't know. That that's I, I, like I said, that's one of the few things that would make me buy a PS4, so I'd be pretty happy about that. Yeah. Yep. Well, a few months ago, if. Roberto? yeah, a few months ago, uh, Square held like a a closed conference back in LA where they're like, "We're gonna talk about Kingdom Hearts and stuff," and then they showed they didn't show any gameplay or trailers or anything about Kingdom Hearts three, but they're like, "Here's Sora and Ninja, and blah blah blah. He can do stuff." But we'll see. All right. So my final prediction. Here. Kind of running a little bit late here, but that's fine. Are you closing out the show with this one? Uh, uh no, we're, we're, we can talk like five more minutes after this or whatever. But um, so my but but it'll be end of predictions for now. So my my my, my final prediction is that in at the Nintendo Digital event, they're gonna unveil a new game, and it's gonna be a game made by Retro Studios. Ah. The guys who made yeah, Metroid Prime One, Two, and Three, Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, um, and it's gonna be a new IP. I think because Tropical Freeze came out what February twenty fourteen. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So I feel like they could they could have moved far along into their next game to the point where they can show something of it. And a lot of people would like to see Metroid. A lot of people would be pissed off if it's Donkey Kong again. <laughs> uh, even though those games were great, I like just like. Be, but that's. I like me. Donkey Kong okay. better. Oh, I'd, okay. I'd be pissed. I'd like, be pissed if it wasn't Metroid. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: they did Metroid Prime one, two, and three, and then they did Donkey Kong. And then when they were working on a game for the Wii U, everybody thought that they were going to do like a big Metroid Prime for the Wii U. And then they unveil like the like a second Donkey Kong that was Tropical Freeze that looked a lot like the one they have done previously. Even though it was great. Like, I love Tropical Freeze. Like, I really do. Um, but I remember a lot of people got pissed off at that moment. Because they were like, oh shit, we thought it was Metroid. And he wasn't. So it was kind of like a troll. <laughs> but um, yeah. But And now they're, they're definitely working on something else. And I guess people are starting, like Lewis... They're starting to expect Metroid again. Uh, some may expect Donkey Kong again. Like it's possible, Lewis. Just you have to <laughs> you have to understand that. Okay. Like it's it's a possibility. But I I think they're gonna do something new. I think because the guys from that studio have mentioned before that they would like to make a new like IP. They are very talented, and I feel like they could handle something different. Or, and this is not part of my prediction. All right, my prediction is that it's gonna be a new IP. But they could also revitalize another old franchise. Because they, they seem to be pretty good at that. Like, because they, they took Metroid that was on hold for a while and they made it great again. And they took Donkey Kong that was on hold for like a, a long time as well and they made it great again. So, what could they take next? You know, like, uh, I think that's a developer that Nintendo trusts to give their good franchises. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're like, oh, what about you guys make a new Ice Climbers? <laughs> yeah, like something <laughs> weird like like that. So I think they're going to show their new game. I think it's going to be a new IP. That's my fifth prediction. Um, and that kind of rounds out our predictions. But if you guys have uh, any more uh, thoughts or things, like I think we can do like more like five minutes of just like you guys talking about like other things that you're excited about or that you want. Like, Louis, I feel like you, you seem to have a little more, right? No, actually, I, that's all I had. I, I didn't think of anything else. I was just oh, okay. so I was just picking what I uh, what I really wanted. I'm going to hop on the back of what you said, Dan, and I actually was, if we had more predictions, I was going to predict retro releases, a new game. Um, I would say that we can't expect retro to just make um, Metroid series for the rest of their lives, because yes, I agree, I agree. they did a fantastic job, but you can't expect them to keep making Metroid for the rest of their lives. So I do not see them releasing Metroid 
um, at all. I could possibly see a new Donkey Kong game just because they did three Metroids. They might do three Donkey right. Kong games. So that's another that's possibility. That's why I thought that was kind of a possibility. Um, I don't know what they could do with it, though. I feel like they've explored a lot of what Donkey Kong is and what Donkey Kong has done. And I do I agree. not know if they could continue it. So I agree with your prediction that they're probably going to release a new IP. Or they might just re, um, revitalize make another one. You know what they could do? Yeah. When was the last Earthbound released? Oh, sure. shit. Oh, my God. A long, like, tw- you know 30 what? years ago? I don't know, like 20 years it ago. It was 1996 or something like that. Um, there you go. Okay, 20 there years go. ago. Um, so I actually have a, a sixth prediction, actually. Uh, N- Nintendo, uh, Nintendo will... Uh, since as it Lucas comes out like what is it the day before E three starts or something like that or the day of the first fourteen mm-hmm. uh, oh okay. I, I know what you're gonna say they're going to uh, unveil uh, uh, Mother three on the virtual, on the virtual console. console yeah for for American for for North America the thing, yeah. wa- the thing that the Americans have wanted since like <laughs> ever yeah the game the game that never came to America yes but... that should that 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 was should have been obvious mm, yes I like that well we'll see we'll see I don't know. I mean, Nintendo is never obvious, so who, who knows <laughs> what the fuck they're doing. That's why I like them. They keep it secret. Yeah. Um, right. Um, Roberto, do you have anything else? Um, I mean, I'd like to see the new Mass Effect. Oh, personally, yeah, right. Something pers- for EA. Someone is yeah. excited about it. So. Personally, I'd like to see it more as like a prequel to see how the Council was founded in space. and Maybe you could be a race other than human and explore the universe that way. Since right. I've never, I was going to say, since I've never played right. Mass Effect, I would like to see Mass Effect uh, trilogy remastered for the PS4, Xbox One. That'd be cool. I think that's all. That's, I, I think we have enough remasters. That's a possibility as well. <laughs> There's never enough remasters, Roberto. <laughs> There's never enough remasters. They'll keep doing them. They just, like Uncharted collection. Just I know never, it's so terrible. Or leaked. Yeah. Um. That was actually pretty funny as well, because like they just like it just happened to show up at the PlayStation Store. And people were tweeting about it, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Before, like, was even announced. It was supposed to be announced and then at Sony E3. Had... It was, yeah. Yeah. And, the, and then Sony had to announce it. But, like, I don't know who, like, who fucked this up <laughs> so bad that they put it in the store. Like, they put it in the fucking <laughs> store. Like, with the logo and everything. Like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, isn't with a lot of these things, you can actually put it on the, uh, on the online without actually um, it showing up on the, on the end user interface. Um, right, like, I bet like they had. Since Netflix, they accidentally accidentally leaked the whole House of Cards season early because you can actually what? like uh, like my YouTube videos. I can I can schedule them out for like to be released and scheduled for you know a certain day at a certain time. So my guess was they were trying to just put right. it in there to unlock at a specific time, but they messed that up. Yeah, but just imagine, Louis, if they do it like that. Like, how many times have they already done it, <laughs> and they still like I don't know. I mean, what if they're the I, new I agree. guy? Like it. Yeah, it was just a new guy. New Somebody guy fucked got fired, up. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he. Yeah. He just. He just messed it up a little bit. Or maybe he did it intentionally. Like. Ha ha ha. But. All right. CJ, do you have some, anything else? Oh, uh, no. I'm. I'm pretty much done. All right. So we're gonna wrap this up. We're all very excited about E3. Uh, we're probably gonna be doing a post E3 show where we kind of wrap up, talk about our predictions, what went wrong, what went right, what we got uh, right, and then count our points, maybe or not. I don't know what you guys are gonna do. What you do with that? But uh, CJ. It was great having you here. Why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about where can, where they can find you? Um, yeah, pretty much uh, anywhere on the internet. I'm known as Boom Coffee, like Twitter, and all that stuff. And uh, also, I I host a anime and manga podcast with um, three of these guys: Dan, Klecker, and Roberto. And you can find yep. that on um, SuperRandomPodcast.wordpress.com, or you can search on YouTube for Studio Random Entertainment, where you can also find this show. So you should be able to find yep. it there. And also on Twitter at pseudo underscore pot. Yeah, that too. Just just complaining about that. Um, all right, Roberto, where they can find you? Yep, you can find me at rjr2992. Yep, Clecker? You can find me at Twitter at oclecker, O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R, uh, at Twitter, or you can find me anywhere else as Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S. Also, Luis, you should definitely look at the Oclecker Twitter because it's hilarious because, like, Oh, oh, it's yeah, amazing. I'm, I'm fo- yeah. I'm following him on Twitter, actually. <laughs> oh, because that's actually... 
Good to hear. The funny thing is, that- I actually know. I uh, I, fought, I listened to episode two of this of this uh, podcast, and so and I heard uh, Klecker. I was like, oh, let me just follow him because he said some off the wall stuff. <laughs> that's great. That's great. See, you have fans, Klecker. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because it's he never means to say <laughs> yeah. any of that either. It just he he just can't help it. Yeah. I, mean, I think just- I actually I think I actually tweeted at you, but you never replied back. Oh, he never uh, logs in. But I'm not uh, okay. like. But I never. I, like I never take a look at that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think I remember that. Like, I don't know, but whatever. Cause, Cause, cool. Because the funny thing is, we actually run the old collector Twitter, <laughs> and then we just like yeah. post like stupid things that he says over there from time to time. Uh, but we'll I'll take a look at whatever he said. One of us. Or... So, Louis, why don't you go ahead and talk about yourself? Uh, plug whatever you're working on and. And where they can find you. Okay, so I'm on Twitter at Chakalaka88, and my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash musingwithninchaka, and that's my the name of my podcast. Um, I also do uh, one Let's Play every weekend now. All right. Also, oh, I, nice. I do want to ask, like, how did you get the Musing Manchaka? Like, how do you get your YouTube channel to be youtube.com slash Um, Basically, I think I just uh, Google emailed me and, and, and offered it to me because, like, I just uh, created my Google Plus and made, made, my, made my first name Musing With and my last name Menchaca. And then oh, shit. <laughs> after, getting, after getting so many subscribers and so much traffic, then Google will automatically email you the custom URL offer. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you have to hit a certain number of subscribers. I think it's like somewhere between three and 500, something like that. Okay. But I don't, yeah. I don't know exactly. Okay. So I got to keep yeah. working on that. <laughs> um, all right. So, guys, this has been the... I almost said the pseudo random podcast. <laughs> Sorry, uh, dude, you don't even know. Yeah, that. I know. I don't know. What, I don't know what's up. Like, it's just my my brain's fucked right now. Um, uh, okay, this has been the Real Game Talk podcast, a podcast where we talk about. Wait, that's the intro. Forget about that. <laughs> um, all right, so you can follow us on Twitter at RGT Podcast. <laughs> oh shit, man! Like, I'm so I'm doing <laughs> I'm so fucking this up because I just hit my mic <laughs> and like it fell off. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Right. 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 Go, go. Okay, okay. You can follow us Just on stick the landing. Okay. You, stick can, the landing. you can follow us on Twitter at RGT Podcast, or you can find our WordPress blog at rgtcast.wordpress.com. And if you follow me on Twitter at Limadinuam, you're gonna see me post like usually retweet the the real game talk and the pseudo random Twitter accounts. Uh, so you can follow everything from there as well. It's probably the easiest way to get everything and also get you know a lot more about me, your wonderful host. Um, so it's been great to have you guys. Um, I think this was a very fun and long talk about what uh, is gonna we're gonna expect, uh, what we're expecting for E three, and I'm very excited to watch E three and talk about it next time. So thank you so much. If you have any topic ideas or you want to talk about like what you are expecting for E three or what you think about E three after that, you can tweet at RGT Podcast or just tweet at me. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye. See you later. Yep. See ya.